Our alternative budget that we launched today is one that invests in housing, healthcare and climate action. One to make life affordable again by tackling the considerable challenges workers and families face in the here and now. One that invests with ambition in the future. Tomic Ektor Tosiat Dineshtiot Idihiot Islancha Agus Iniv Erson Naharaja. Nimor Eg Bushaid Fiha Fihakar Bay Makar Sale Nis In Vakana Ayen of Diini. Housing is Sinn Fein's number one priority. And the housing crisis has dominated, as you know, life in Ireland for more than a decade. Rents are out of control, house prices are sky high, and homelessness has reached record levels. An entire generation is locked out of affordable housing. And far from fixing the crisis, this government has made matters even worse. So in this alternative budget, we present measures to turn the tide and build a better future. We want to end the housing crisis, make housing affordable again for ordinary workers and families. We provide significant investment for a massive scaling up in the delivery of social and affordable homes. Sinn Féin would kickstart the biggest state-led housing programme we've ever seen. The cost of living crisis continues, ever-increasing housing costs, including mortgage interest rate hikes, energy bills, grocery prices, fuel costs, childcare, mean that working families struggle to make it to the end of the week. So today, Pierce and Rose present a significant package to cut costs in housing, childcare and energy, to put money back in people's pockets through fair cuts to the USC and a meaningful increase in the minimum wage. Our hospitals and our wider health service are under huge pressure. Record treatment waiting lists, extraordinary emergency department waiting times, perpetual overcrowding are deep-rooted symptoms of the chronic pro problem, capacity. Too many people are locked out of treatment and care, and the no enormous cost overruns overseen by the Minister for Health demonstrates this, go this government's lack of a plan. In contrast, we will meet the challenge head-on with ambition and common sense. In this budget, we provide significant investment to begin the transformation of our health service. Investment to train, recruit and retain more healthcare professionals to deliver more beds, to tackle the trolley crisis and record treatment waiting lists. We believe in strengthening and modernising our public healthcare system and our goal is to create a health service that works where everyone can get access to the right care in the right place at the right time. The climate emergency is real and immediate. In this budget, we present measures to meet this challenge in ways that are ambitious, but they're also fair and progressive. This means being ambitious in retrofitting housing, ambitious in protecting biodiversity, and big ambition when it comes to renewable energy and the achievement of energy security and independence. Sinn Féin's Alternative budget is a budget that invests in positive change, invests to support workers and families today, invests in the future. The strength of our public finances means there is considerable scope not only to make a difference to the lives of people, but to make a difference that really lasts. Fairness is a choice. Progress is a choice. Delivery is a choice. In this budget, Sinn Féin chooses to deliver the homes people need, chooses to resource and invest in our health service so that people get the care and treatment they deserve, chooses to meet the climate challenge with ambition and determination. And our budget proposals illustrate, illustrate the type of change that a Sinn Féin government would deliver. So I want to thank Pierce and Rose and the wider Sinn Féin team for producing what is an extremely comprehensive plan, and I now invite them to present Sinn Féin's alternative budget. Good Mary Lou, and I want to welcome everybody here today to the launch of our uh, alternative budget for 2024. Our budget and 
Budget 2024 must focus on making life more affordable for our people because for too many people the cost of living, the cost of getting by is simply far too high. And despite doing everything right for themselves and for their families, the government is not doing right by them. Housing costs are too high while the numbers of homes to buy or rent are far too low. Childcare costs remain extortionate for parents trying to juggle work and care for the children. And energy costs are putting families, the elderly and the vulnerable under serious financial pressure. Our health system is lurching from crisis to crisis to the detriment of patients and the staff in the healthcare system. For many, so many of the problems our people in our economy face are a direct legacy of Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil policies. A legacy of 12 budgets under Fine Gael, seven of those budgets supported and delivered with the support of Fianna Fáil. And we can do so much better. Our budget proposals today outline the type of change that is possible, the change that would be delivered by a Sinn Féin government. We are ambitious for our people and for our economy and we are determined to deliver change and we recognise that our goals cannot be delivered without careful management of the public finances. Our budget strategy would build resilience in the public finances, ensure that day-to-day -day current expenditure is not funded through potential windfall or volatile tax receipts. It would provide resources to fund additional public investment and respond to the needs of the future. In 2024, we would deliver a budget package of 6.8 billion euros. 3.7 billion euros of this expenditure is pre-committed, allocated to maintain existing levels of services, given demographic change for capital expenditure and indeed the existing public sector pay commitments. 4.1 billion euros of our package would provide for new measures and include a contingency allocation of 815 million euros. The package is offset by 1 billion euros of additional tax revenue, putting current expenditure on a sustainable footing. And these progressive changes to the tax system are underpinned by the principle of fairness and equity. Our budget proposals also include 1.9 billion euro package of tax reductions, including temporary measures to put money back into workers' <coughs> pockets and to support Irish enterprise. Our households right across the state are all too aware of the cost of living crisis and that it hasn't gone away. A Sinn Féin government would support households this winter with a cost of living package equating to 1.35 billion euros. This includes the introduction of targeted and temporary mortgage interest relief, supporting struggling families with a portion of their increased mortgage costs as a result of increased interest rate hikes. It would also include cutting Housing, uh, household electricity prices to an affordable level for workers and families, a measure that has been introduced in Germany, in the Netherlands and indeed right throughout Europe. We would extend the current VAT rate of 9% on electricity and gas, further supporting households. And as fuel and heating costs continue to rise, the government's plan to hike petrol and diesel further on the 11th and the 31st of October, we would stop that. Sinn Féin would not hike the rate of excise duty on petrol and diesel and we would slash excise duty for more than one third of households that rely on home heating oil to warm their homes. We would not increase carbon tax. Recognising the increased burden faced by families, we would provide a double child benefit payment in December to help families in the run-up to Christmas. Rising prices, as we know, affect everyone, but they hit our most vulnerable and those on low incomes hardest, and Sinn Féin would support them through a parallel of lump sum payments, including a Christmas bonus for social welfare recipients and pensioners, and a €150 Euro payment for pensioners living alone, a €300 Euro payment for fuel allowance recipients, and a €400 Euro payment for working family payment recipients and carers, and also a €500 Euro payment for citizens with disabilities. As a result of the high cost of living and government failure this winter, will be a difficult one for so many. Our cost of living package would provide support and relief to them. Budget 2024 must tackle the high cost of living to ensure that workers and families are getting the much needed break. And this is what a Sinn Féin government would deliver. Our proposals in include the introduction of temporary and target mortgage interest relief to support households with a rise in mortgage costs. This would cost 300 million euro in 2024. We also propose putting one month's rent back into renters' pockets with a three-year ban on rent increases. 
supporting parents with the cost of childcare, and empowering more women to enter the workforce by reducing childcare fees by over 50% this year, next year. Boosting incomes with a €1.50 Euro increase in the minimum wage and delivering an income tax package that is fair. For some time, Sinn Féin have argued that the fairest way to cut taxes and to put money back into workers' pockets is through the reduction in the USC. We have won that argument. But it is the detail that matters. We would reduce the too lower rate of USC and increase the entry point for the third rate of USC by more than €3,000 to almost €25,960. Together with an increase in tax credits, this would put more than €375 Euro back into workers' pockets of middle and low-income earners. A fair tax package. The cost of living crisis hits the vulnerable, citizens with disabilities and those on low incomes hardest. And under this government, the value of social welfare rates has fallen in the past number of years, making those households poor. So Budget 2024 must protect the most vulnerable. Sinn Féin would increase the weekly core social welfare rates by 15 euros, increasing the weekly pension rate by up to 15 euros and the fuel allowance by 5 euros per week. Recognising the cost of disability made worse during the cost of living crisis, Sinn Féin would increase weekly disability related payments by 20 euros per week. Sinn Féin would also invest in our health services and deliver much needed change. Ours is a multi-year plan to fix the health service, ending the two-tier system and removing barriers to care. A Sinn Féin government would begin with a year one investment of 1.3 billion euros in capacity and workforce training and in the cost, reducing the cost of healthcare. Addressing the policy failures of Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael, which have blighted our health services for too many years. Among Sinn Féin's priorities for 2024 would be reducing the cost of medicines for families, including the reduction of the maximum amount payable under the drugs payment scheme from €80 Euro to €50, Euro, abolishing prescription charges and extending medical cards to 400,000 citizens. We would improve hospital access by investing in 1,800 additional hospital beds to be delivered over three years to tackle overcrowding and reduce waiting lists. And we would invest in primary care. An increasing investment in mental health services is envisaged in our budget, especially for children and young people, beginning with an additional investment of 75 million euros next year, providing greater home support and care for older people, and developing our health workforce with additional training, places for GPs, medical interns, specialists, psychologists, nurses, and other health and social care professionals. These investments would put health, the health service on the right path, reducing healthcare costs and building a service that serves the needs of patients, their families, and indeed our healthcare staff. So budget 2024 must make life more affordable for our, young, for our people, young and old. It must tackle the government's housing crisis, a social disaster that is damaging the life chances of our citizens and undermining our economy. It must also build the 21,000 homes, public homes that we need, supporting also renters and addressing the scandal of homelessness. It must begin the journey of fixing the health service, cutting health costs, tackling the scourge of hospital overcrowding and reducing waiting lists. And change is possible, but not while this government remains in office. Sinn Féin's alternative budget shows what is possible, what can be done, what should be done, and what would be done under a Sinn Féin government. Gromaigov. OK, thanks, Pierce Fáilte-Galair. Uh, I'm just going to run through a couple of the initiatives uh, that will demonstrate to you that what, what this change could look like and, and what it could feel like for people, and starting with climate. So the alternative budget, more than any other date to date, shows how serious Sinn Féin is about climate. Uh, we are resolute in our ambition to deliver to 2030 targets while ensuring a just transition. It's reckless in the extreme to not increase investment in this green transition. That is why we are investing 542 million euro in environmentally related expenditure. We cannot continue to languish in the bottom three states in the EU uh, when we measure the share of energy that's coming from renewables. Uh, it doesn't go unnoticed that the plans of the, the current coalition uh, push all of the hard work 
down the road beyond the lifetime of this government. I think that was mentioned this morning uh, on, on, on Morning Ireland. Uh, even the lower targets that they have set themselves haven't been met to date. That is why the second largest capital investment after housing for us will be climate. At the heart of Sinn Féin's plan for the green transition is fairness. The first thing we do is to replace the government's retrofit scheme with a system that works for everyone. At, as Social Justice Ireland have argued, the scheme as it currently is, is designed, the way it's designed currently is deeply regressive. Under Sinn Féin's proposals, grants would be tiered so that the more help that you need uh, to afford a retrofit, the more help that you will get. And this would cost 178 million. We propose a specific scheme for households relying on solid fuels, as these are often cold rural homes with the highest emissions. We have set aside 60 million euro to help households to move away from the solid fuels rather than to penalise them. And obviously coming from rural Ireland in a place like Mayo, I very much welcome this initiative because heretofore it's been the banning of, of, uh, the, banning of the use of turf which has really concerned people without having an alternative. And here we present an alternative for them. We would double the funding for the solar PV scheme, as well as rolling out solar panels on all schools at that cost of 67.5 million euro. We also have specific measures to address wealth-based emission and energy poverty. We would invest 75.5 million in biodiversity, including establishing a, a voluntary 50 million uh, nature restoration fund. Investing in the planning system and apprenticeships also form key components of our strategy for decarbonisation. We would invest in public transport, including the Western Rail Corridor, from Athenry to Clearmorris, and then to prepare the lines from Clearmorris to Colooney as well, and obviously the Navan uh, Rail Line. We would make 20% fair reduction and the 50% fair reduction that currently is there, we would make that permanent for young people and for students. We would extend it to rural operators and ramp up the spending on connecting Ireland and the rural bus scheme. Giving people an alternative is how you make that lasting difference in people's lives and how you build that relationship with people in tackling climate change, all of us together. Uh, when we look at disability, like our climate response, we need to embed our approach to disability across all departments. We are ready to, to we, we are, are, we have to live in an inclusive society and Sinn Féin will create an inclusive society. We need to ensure that people with disabilities are not further disadvantaged by the cost of living crisis, either directly or indirectly by difficulties in the field of staffing, recruitment and retention. Key to this is the fair terms and condition of the Section 39 workers, which we have provided for, again, in allocated, unallocated funds. Uh, we don't know the outcome of those negotiations. We would have hoped that they would be further advanced by now, but they're not, but we have allowed for that. The approach of pretending uh, that the state is not responsible for the terms of their employment has to end once and for all. They deserve pay and conditions comparable to what they would get if, there were, if they were public services. And they deserve to be included in the public sector pay agreement. Budget 2024 must tackle the appalling high rate of poverty across households headed by a person with a disability. Core weekly rates must be increased if we are to make a lasting difference in people's lives. And that's why we are proposing the 20 euro increase to disability payments, as Pierre said, in recognition of those additional costs associated with having a disability. And the cost of that is 76 million. Additionally, we are proposing an increased investment of 151 million in disability services. Sinn Féin would deliver 120,000 additional personal assistant hours, 5,000 nights of respite, 740 additional adult day service places, and 100 additional intensive home care packages. It is unacceptable that we have young people with disabilities living in nursing homes and people with intellectual disabilities currently living with their elderly parents. 
we would invest 32 million in, in current and 75 million in capital to deliver the appropriate residential care that's needed. Now, after 12 years of Fine Gael in charge of justice, there is now a real crisis in policing across the country. There are fewer Gardaí and fewer Garda stations than when Fine, Fine Gael came into power 12 years ago. People should feel safe in their homes and on the streets and in their communities. And that's why Sinn Féin would prioritise crime and community safety. We would recruit 1,000 additional Gardaí at the cost of 8 million, and we double the, the Gardaí training allowance to attract new, uh, new recruits. And this would cost 5 million. We believe without adding the extra places, without backing that up with the guard, the trainee allowance, doubling that, we are not going to get the recruits that we need. As well as setting up a recruitment task force to get to the heart of why we are losing so many experienced guard, we would invest 30 million in the courts and in the criminal justice system, including additional resources for the DPP, court services, reduce, reducing uh, reoffending, and increasing funding for youth justice interventions. The backlogs in the courts are absolutely un unacceptable and they're causing huge distress to, to victims of crime and to families uh, waiting for, uh, for court hearings. Um, obviously, it goes without saying that Sinn Féin as a party uh, are preparing for Irish unity and for the reunification of our country. And that's why we would spend 1.5 million on a citizens' assembly. And we would also make a research fund dedicated to research on north-south cooperation, integration, and uh, reunification. There is some good work being done by the ESRI, but we believe that notwithstanding the macroeconomic model that's currently being done, with the ESRI um, and IBEC, that, that, uh, that the, the data gaps that are there uh, need to be addressed as well. So we will continue with that. We need to be planning for Irish unity and what a new Ireland would look like. We see that across business, across our communities um, and, and all other sectors in life. We need to plan. Um, finally, the core spending uh, a priority above all of the others in this Housing in this budget is housing, oh, no, Brennan, be pleased to know. Uh, we have the opportunity to make a lasting difference in people's lives by addressing housing. Uh, we can turn this around. We absolutely can turn this housing crisis around because too many lives are being put on hold as a direct result of the government's failure to tackle the housing crisis. That's why we are investing 1.4 billion euro in providing social and affordable uh, homes. People are delaying starting families because they can't afford more than a, afford more than a studio apartment, a room, or a house share, or, or spare room in their parents' houses. Others are commuting for hours and hours each day where they, where they work because they cannot afford to live uh, where they work. Others are feeling forced to move abroad because they can't see a future here. Homeowners who had to struggle, uh, who had their mortgages sold off to vulture funds without their permission, with the backing of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, are absolutely struggling with up to 10% uh, high inter interest rates there. The housing crisis now touches on almost every aspect of our society, and failed housing policies are driving the recruitment crisis in vital public services, such as hospitals and schools and public transport, and the Gardaí and across the wider uh, economy. Accommodation has now become the biggest biggest barrier to third level education. We heard from the USI this morning, accommodation is their number one priority. We know that numbers of people have dropped out. I think something like 19% of people have dropped out of third level. It is having a real, real impact on that. And what they tell us this morning is that despite the government promises and the figures that they are putting out, that there is no additional accommodation done. The commitment they made last year, the government made last year, they have broken. But a, a particular, um, we would also provide 100 million this year to unlock student accommodation. And that's why that needs to be done. That would unlock the projects that this government have left sit on the shelf. It would deliver affordable student accommodation and take the pressure off the private rental market as well. Now, my colleague Ono Brin is here with us to expand, uh, to expand uh, on our plans to deliver 21,000 social uh, and affordable homes, as well as how we can support uh, renters. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Rose. Um, uh, not a day goes by when we don't read in the newspapers or see on the television more bad news about housing. 
rents continue to rise, uh, house prices continue to rise, homelessness is at record levels, uh, and the government's inadequate social and affordable housing targets continue uh, to be missed. Uh, but those people who are in need of secure, appropriate and affordable accommodation don't need politicians to tell them how bad it is. What they want to know is can things change? And what this budget is about today, particularly the housing aspects of it, is to say to those people who need affordable housing, there is hope. Things can be done differently. Political choices can be made. Single most important thing in terms of affordable housing in this budget is the public housing programme. Uh, yet again, we've set out very clearly how you would fund uh, an increase in social affordable rental uh, and affordable uh, purchase uh, homes uh, to that figure of over 20,000. Uh, that's an extra 7,300 homes on top of the government's targets, of course. If this government is left in office next year, they won't meet those targets. However, we've very clear uh, proposals as how to do that. We also have a new proposal this year, which is, you recall, the scandal of homelessness among uh, over 65s, uh, one of the most appalling and unacceptable uh, aspects of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael's housing crisis. We have a new specific measure which in a single year would end that scandal. Not a single person over 55 would be in emergency accommodation under this budget, and we would go beyond that uh, by ensuring through the use of emergency procurement and planning powers and new building technologies, we would also make a significant reduction in child homelessness in that 12-month period. Uh, Pearson Rose have already explained uh, what we would do for hard-pressed mortgage holders, but once again, we're standing up for renters because since last year, uh, the burden on renters, both existing and new, uh, has reached uh, even worse uh, levels. And therefore, the uh, ban on rent increases for three years and a real refundable tax credit to put that full month's rent back into every private renter's pocket is outlined. Uh, we've also heard quite a lot in recent uh, months about delays in the planning system. The single biggest cause of delays in the planning system, whether it's residential development uh, or offshore wind, is a failure of government to resource that planning system, lack of staff for local authorities and on board Planola. We've set out very clearly how we would give on board Planola the additional 30 staff that they've said they need beyond what government has already provided, particularly to address the shortfall of experienced staff to deal with offshore wind as well as housing. But crucially, our local authorities need at least an additional 500 staff. No commitment from government has been given for that. And we've set out how we would deliver that in two years. And then finally, because climate change is not just about transport and energy and agriculture. It's also about the built environment, fourth largest emitter uh, of carbon. Uh, and in our budget again this year, we've shown both through a far more ambitious programme of bringing vacants and derelicts back into stock, at least 20% of our public housing, embracing new cutting edge building technologies to deliver at least 2,000 public homes uh, through off-site uh, uh, assembly, uh, as well as significantly increasing the budget for retrofitting of social homes in the introduction of uh, solar and PV, uh, we can significantly increase public and affordable housing supply while reducing carbon emissions and making a real contribution to the climate change agenda that the party has outlined. So, thanks very much for that. Uh,